So hi, Micro Punter here again, and today yet another question about uh, connecting a camera to a microscope or uh, about selecting the right uh, microscope camera. I did receive a question again, and I'd like uh, to read it out uh, to you. I'm a student and new to microscopy, so I don't know the real difference in purchasing a microscope with a one megapixel camera versus a five megapixel one. I also don't know if it would be any better if I used a camera that I already have, a Nikon DSLR camera, and purchased an adapter instead. I hope that you can help me. Well, first of all, thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, again, it seems to be one of the more common types of questions, which uh, camera to choose uh, for a microscope. It is a little bit, uh, yeah, a confusing situation, I have to admit, because there is, of course, no uh, yeah, perfect, uh, perfect solution here. But I decided in this video to give you a general rule of thumb. You're, you have basically three choices based on your question. First uh, choice is um, a one megapixel microscope camera that you connect directly to a computer. The second one is a five megapixel camera. Is it worth the megapixels? Is it really important? Um, and the third option is, is a DSLR camera. And I'd like to, um, of course, um, address all of these uh, issues. And I'd like to give you a recommendation. And that is, if you already have a microscope with a trinocular head, a phototube, so like one over here where you can connect the camera here at the top, if you have a microscope like this, and if you already have a DSLR camera, then by all means, first try to get a, a DSLR camera adapter and connect that. Overall, this probably will give you the most, uh, yeah, the, the best results. Um, if you already have a camera, that is uh, because uh, those DSLR cameras are quite um, expensive, of course. Um, the reason is uh, the following. Um, the DSLR cameras, they have a large sensor size um, and, of course, uh, accordingly, a large number of megapixels. But that is not really the main reason. The main reason is, is that many DSLR cameras these days allow you to capture also video. Um, and uh, while other microscope cameras also allow you to do that, the frame rate or the quality often is not very high. But with DSLR cameras, you can capture also high quality videos and those ad adapters that you can get these days generally for DSLR cameras are not so expensive and sometimes even cheaper uh, than separate microscope cameras and uh, for this is the reason I think if you already have a camera around and a microscope with a trinocular head this is probably the cheapest solution and overall which will give you most likely the best results. However, um, it is also possible to directly connect uh, a camera, if, uh, a, yeah, a microscope camera. And uh, this is then, of course, the option if you do not have a microscope with a phototube um, because of weight reasons. You can also connect these uh, cameras then, of course, directly to the eyepieces significant advantage um, and here you have uh, the thing that you of course need uh, to connect it to a computer um, so this might also be something that you have to take into consideration that you need a little bit of more space now concerning the question of how many megapixels should your microscope camera have i can also give you recommendations first of all um, I'm going to be quite frank with you, anything above 5 megapixels is wasted, I think. The reason is, is because the microscope itself is not able to deliver the resolution. So if you have, I've seen some microscope cameras with 9 megapixels or so, um, quite expensive, and I'm asking myself, why would you need that? Um, the sensor is quite small, so that means the pixel density is extremely high. This means there are other negative effects like a worse signal to noise ratio and so on, a worse low light performance. So I don't really see a benefit of going, I don't know, um, nine megapixel uh, microscope cameras. The microscope is not able to provide more resolution anyway. So all you're getting is you're getting larger images um, you know, that don't show you more clarity. So what is the cutoff, so to say? I would say that um, essentially uh, five megapixels is perfectly fine. Even three megapixels is going to work. Um, however, um, it, what you want is, is uh, you want uh, to capture the full image resolution um, with a microscope camera and you don't want to have any loss. And this means that uh, this depends of course a little bit on the magnification as well, but with five megapixels you can capture the full image resolution, the full Im image resolution that the microscope provides. Everything more than that is a waste, everything significantly less than that, then the microscope will capture less um, of uh, the, um, the image, uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the camera will capture less of the image resolution that the microscope delivers. Long sentence. Um, the 
of course, this also depends a little bit on the magnification that you're there, that you're using. I made a separate video on this uh, where there's the whole math explained. But generally, I would say that uh, with five megapixels, you're going to be fine. Is there now also um, a use for, uh, let's say, a one megapixel camera? Yes, there is. If you want to save cost, for example, um, and uh, if you want to only have a so-called a live view. So if you're not really interested in making high quality images, but only needs the pictures for document documentation um, and not necessarily for publication. And uh, if you would just want to look at the image as it is displayed on the computer screen, you'll be perfectly fine with also a one megapixel uh, camera. And uh, this also saves a little bit of cost. But if you don't know, and if money is not so much of an issue, I would say, um, yeah, three megapixels and upwards is going to be fine. Five megapixels, you're on the safe side. Um, everything much more than that, I think, is, is, is wasted. Okay, I think that's enough uh, for today. I wish you all the best. Leave your comments behind. Uh, do consider subscribing to this channel if you like these type of videos. Happy micro hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye bye.